What just happened? Has the death sentence been carried out? Was that bright light some sort of misdirection? I have a feeling that something huge just happened. But since we're all still alive and haven't been dissolved, I assume whatever happened was good for us. It's time to end this. We must meet our punishment to that beast. But, didn't you say just a moment ago that it can't be defeated? I have gained the strength sufficient to deal with it. Through certain means, I now have the ability to separate the power of the Primordial Sea from that creature. We should seize the opportunity to pursue our quarry. Traveler, now that the oratories can no longer function, I require an executor to help me mete out justice. The root of the calamities befalling Fontaine, the beast that enacts the prophecy. Its name is the All-Devouring Narwhal. Come with me, Traveler. The hour of execution has come. Thanks for helping with the cleanup. It should have been my job, but... Oh well. It was just supposed to be a short private training session for me. I didn't think that my disciple and my master's pet would start brawling in the meantime. Well, actually, I had a feeling that it would happen at some point. But they bumped into one another earlier than I thought. What a blunder. I suppose I'll have to swing my sword three million times as penance. Power. Who are you exactly? Uh, Paimon has an idea. From what 
what she said earlier, she must be Child's master. Skirk, right? It's just that he gave us the impression that she was the uh, less talkative person. I simply did not have anything to say to the weak. But you, on the other hand, managed to defeat the all-devouring Narwhal without using power from beyond this world. So you may speak to me as equals. I have to agree. It's a strange use of a planet's primordial waters just to raise an all-devouring narwhal. That kind of power is wasted on it. It's not cooperative, it eats too much, and I have more important things to do with my time than pet-sitting. The only thing that creature has going for it is its looks. All in all, it fails as a pet. Uh, Miss Skirk? Uh, I think you might have missed the point. The point being? Well, being that this pet almost destroyed an entire nation. So what sort of person is your master? Well, child's master's master. Wait, is that right? Oh, right. So you don't know him. Sorry, I assumed you did. His name is Sir Tologi. Huh? I am unfamiliar with that name. Huh. So Master is insufficiently famous. Huh. How should I describe him then? Have you heard of the name The Fowl? The Fowl? Still nothing? Well, how about The Visionary? Vetterful near then? Or... Gold Rhine Daughter? Ooh! That one we've heard! Rhine Daughter's part of the Hexen Circle! She's Albedo's mom, right? Oh... So you do know that name. To be honest, I also heard all of those names and titles from my master. I don't actually know them either. But I suppose you understand now, yes? My master is likely a similar sort to Rhine Daughter. They are both pursuing some form of perfection. Wait! Didn't you also mention a visionary person? Paimon didn't quite catch their name. Actually, never mind that. I believe it expedient to inform you. That the all-devouring Narwhal used up nearly all its strength fighting you. Such roiling hydro energies will prove difficult for the planet's deep seas to digest. As such, the Fontaine back on the surface has most likely been thrown into chaos. In other words, the prophecy that you've been fretting over should now be in full swing. What? Not to worry. Fosalor has already managed to deceive the Heavenly Principles. In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only Farina will remain. Weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Initiate emergency rescue!
is receding! It's a miracle! The water is receding! We didn't dissolve! The prophecy was wrong! The prophecy was wrong! was pretty simple. With the disaster just having passed, we would print a free edition packed to the margins with good news to calm people down. The value for these big scoops lies in their inevitable follow-ups. We'll publish further reports and go into the stories behind those people. Edwin's assistant, Jurier, created a true flying ship, while Navia is leading people in the reconstruction of their home. I'm sure that these stories could draw even your well-traveled eye. That's exactly why I'd like you to come conduct interviews with me. You're the best incubators of news, if you haven't noticed. And also, with you around, I'm sure I'll get to see that duke. Uh, are you sure? Hasn't he turned you down several times already? Oh, this time will be different. Come on, let's head to Poisson first, and then make a trip to the fortress. There are some things you'll only know when you get there. <laughs> Time to go. Navia! Oh, it's you. What brings you all here? Hey, we're just having a look around. I'm here to update myself on how things are going here. Hmm? Oh, the Fatui are here too. Ah, uh, uh, let me introduce you. This is Mr. Garunt Snezhevich. He represented the Knave in sending us a large amount of supplies, and is helping with our work. Our residents are hard at work as well. Thanks to everyone, work is progressing nicely. We've lost a lot of people, but we're moving forward. That will have to be enough. Hello, Miss Charlotte. I'm a big fan of yours. 
I especially like that article you wrote last year about Fontaine's stray cats. But if you don't mind, could you not emphasize our role too much in your report? It's not charity we're doing here. We just happen to share the same interests as Espina. I get where you're coming from. I'll keep it as simple as possible. Or would you be willing to feature as friendly neighbors? That would be fine. Thanks. Oh, you're back too. How are things? We finished laying down the construction materials. It'll be another hour before the workers are able to go over there. Huh? You hit two clients? Well, her reputation's greatly risen after that whole duel business with Miss Farina. So she's here in Poisson to wait out the heat. Uh, all right, all right. She really came here to help me out. There's too much to consider in the reconstruction of Poisson. The Spina has need of more decision makers. And, well, I do already happen to be connected to Mr. Callus. Oh, wait just a moment. Do you mind me asking a few questions? You know, about how you felt before the duel, about what it was like facing down a god. There's lots of exciting material there, I bet. Uh, forget it. I'm sure you can find a better theme than that, Miss Charlotte. Oh, I see you're the same as always. Couldn't you do me a favor, for Navia's sake? Well, if we're talking about doing things for my sake, you might as well just take a few more photos of me. Or of the Traveler. It's better than wasting time persuading Chlorand at any rate. Of course I will. I'm not gonna let him off that easy. All right, then everyone who wants to be in the photo gather up and smile. Did a good shot, did Paimon look cute in it? Not bad. Your addition really helped the composition of the picture. All right, hang on a moment. Let me snap a few more shots. All right, that should do it. I'll be back here later anyway, so uh, let's call it a day. <laughs> You're very quick. Speed is of the essence when it comes to the news, and freshness is the key. Also, not to brag, but I'm pretty good at building connections. Who knows? I might eventually get that interview with you after all, Miss Clarand. Wow, you really do have that never-say-die spirit. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'll hazard a guess that this is how you got that interview at the Fortress of Maripede. Whoa, you're well informed. Let me make a guess too. I asked Sijuin, who told Monsieur Nervillet, and he told you, right? That's a very complete information chain. In truth, all Monsieur Nervillet asked me was, when did the fortress become so friendly towards the media? I told him that it was best not to speak too soon. There's no guarantee that Ridesley will make a personal appearance. You're right. I've got to treasure every moment I have with them. In which case, I'll be making a move first. <sighs> Stay safe now, and... Tell me if you hear anything interesting. I'll treat you to afternoon tea in exchange. You seem curious about the fortress. Of course. Ah, uh, that Risley. I still remember going down to the fortress to grill him for information on my father's case. Boy, did he take me for a ride. Without telling me anything, of course. But he did invite you to tea, didn't he? Two large pots of it, in fact. It was good tea. I have to agree. The tea there is very good. Ah, speaking of that, would you like to have some today? I mean, you've got time, right? Well, I'd be partial to some shortbread. Wow, <laughs> it's like we've got a menu or something. <laughs> sure, sure. Mm, good. What flavor of biscuits would you like, Mr. Snezhevich? Me? Uh, I'm fine with anything. But I would... Prefer chocolate, should you have it. All right. Leave it to me. I'll go over the newly arrived supplies with you later, Mr. Snezhevich. We should be able to finish the preparatory work today. That works great for me. Huh. Is it just me, or did you get a new lipstick? Uh, I did. It was a gift from Sijuin. Want to give it a try? I think the color would suit you, too. Wow, guess we're here again, huh? There's a real nostalgia.
nostalgic feeling to this place. Looks like you've been missing us. Duke! Did you come all the way to the entrance to greet us? Of course. I'm here to welcome you and our dear Miss Charlotte, whom our good head nurse recommended to me. It's an honor to finally meet the much-rumored Duke! Thank you for consenting to my visit to the fortress, sir! No need to thank me. But that said, I shouldn't be the focus of your interview. I trust you recall our agreement? Of course, of course! All right then, this way. Uh, uh. Uh. Hmm? Hey, no need to be so nervous. I've already taken all the photos we need. Um... Miss Charlotte, do these pictures really need to be published on the cover of the Steambird? It would seem that Miss Lorveen doesn't want her face to appear beside that of Mr. Jurier, hmm? Sir, please don't say things like that. <laughs> but it looks like dear Mr. Jurier denies it. Might this interview be very important to you, then? No, I, I, I just... This is my first time being interviewed, and I'm very thankful to the Steambird for... <laughs> now, I might not look it, but I actually did meet Mr. Edwin once. And I'll be honest, I enjoyed chatting with you more. You've definitely got more of that genius vibe going on. The boat that brought about a miracle, the ark that saved the people. Why, you recreated a myth back there, like an emissary of legend. Still, if I might ask, where's that flying ship now? Huh. Looks like Charlotte's trying to get herself another exclusive scoop. I have to apologize, but that ship is presently in the bowels of our factory. I'm afraid it won't be easy for you to get a shot of it. Really? Well, then in that case, could I have an interview with you to make up for that loss? You already know my answer, I'm afraid. Best you interview our head nurse instead. Or perhaps you'd like to take another photo of this couple of researchers? Did you really have to use the word couple? Well then, two solo photos will do. Is my hair messed up? Please, someone help me have a look. Things sure are getting pretty lively here. Eh, we've seen this kind of thing before. Oh, seems like everyone's here. Would any of you like to try this new drink I came up with? Ah, Sijuin. Uh, uh... Hey, Miss Charlotte. Why don't you, uh, take some pretty photos of our head nurse? Hmm? Uh, sure. Come on, Miss Sujuin. Over this way. Let's find a brighter spot. Huh? Oh, uh, sure. Uh, do I have to smile? So, how have things been at the fortress? Same old, same old, as you can see. Fontaine's undergone some changes, but this place is still more or less the same. Other than that flying ship, it got a tad too much attention, I think. That's why I decided to let the interview go through. We should direct more public opinions toward the behind-the-scenes heroes. Am I right, Mr. Jurier? Miss Lurveen? You're too kind, sir. I believe that you too should have your day in the sun. Not that you would want that, which is a pity. <laughs> I'll just leave the spotlight to you two. I see. Lots of things happened that day, huh? Anyway, regarding that Harbinger, I'm not sure you remember, but his three young followers are still waiting for his return. He sure did win them over, huh? I'll tell them that there's good news and bad news. The good being that their boss seems fine and the bad being that they must face extended sentences for abetting his escape. Oh, actually, what about you? Are things gonna change for you too? What change can there be? The fortress will keep chugging along, and so will my duties. As to what Miss Farina's departure will mean for the nation, and if our laws and governance will be transformed, we'll leave those to the folks in the overworld. Hey everyone, the photo shoot's done! Good. In that case, let's call it a day here. Thanks for your cooperation. Come on, Traveler, let's go! Till next time, everyone!
There'll be a next time? Maybe. Who knows? I might write a story about the underwater factory next time. Until then! All right. Last stop, the docks. Oh, you know, I'd love to see you in one of Charlotte's photo shoots one day. Is that really necessary? Our line of work doesn't really require much photographing. It's precisely because we don't need the picture that they'll have value as keepsakes. You don't really look all that opposed to the idea, you know? Maybe I'm just happy that I managed to once again avoid the spotlight. I think this interview went well either way. Yes, you successfully kept prying eyes away by using Mr. Jurier and Miss Lorvine as shields. Very good. You should be happy for them. They have a bright future ahead of them. mentioned that she stayed in touch with Linny and the others after working together. Apparently, they've been at the docks distributing these strange pockets the whole time since. Traveler, Paimon. Ah, oh, and Miss Charlotte, too. Would you like a magic pocket? What sort of gadget is it? It's a wondrous bag that can be used to carry many things. The water level has returned to normal. But if you see any of your things floating around, you can use this to carry them. Or you could trick a friend into doing it for you. Trick a friend? Hmm, I wonder which of my friends would fall for that. You could just make a friend like Fremenet here. Isn't that right, Fremenet? <sighs> Is this what you meant by... I'll help you make some more friends. To be honest, that sounds pretty sweet. Could I have your contact, please? Uh... Oh, uh... Sure. Uh... Please, write down my address. You sure are working hard to help Remini socialize. He was the one who proposed doing this. He even wants to assist in our magic shows. Yes, I was planning to first introduce Pear as an assistant, and later Fremenet himself. In the future, I think we can leave underwater escape magic to him too. That said, would anyone want to see a diver escape underwater? Oh, it'll work out. Every journey begins with the first step. He'll become a part of our show eventually. Uh, Lynette, could you come over? Miss Charlotte says she wants to take a picture of us. Got it. My, that Charlotte is rather perceptive. She got rid of everyone the moment she realized I had something to say to you. Hmm. So, how have things been, Traveler? Father says that you did a great deal during the latest events. She's very grateful for your contributions to Fontaine. Oh, I guess you haven't heard. Well... After Lady Farina left, Father and Monsieur Nervilet opened negotiations, during which he gave Fontaine's gnosis to her as a... diplomatic gift. A diplomatic gift? A gnosis? Yes, I was quite surprised at first myself. But when I thought it over, there were actually a number of things going for it. It could have been done as an apology for the incident with Lord Child, or as thanks for his help in tying the all-devouring Narwhal down. Furthermore, Father did also lend significant aid to Fontaine and Poisson. Well, uh, that's true, but this is a gnosis we're talking about! Doesn't this seem a bit... Uh, irresponsible? 
I would agree, but I've also heard that... It seems that Monsieur Nervilet has had a significant change of heart regarding the matter. I... Uh, so there's some reason for this that only Nervilet knows about? I suspect you'll have to ask him about that yourself. Ah, uh, yes, speaking of which, I did see him strolling around the entrance to the Fortress of Meripede a while back. Uh, isn't he real busy and stuff? Pilot didn't think he'd have the time for that. But back to the topic. The Gnosis was given to the Knave, right? What about Child? They say that he's returned to Snezhnaya to recover from his wounds. I hear that the recent disaster really did a number on his health. That's true. When you think about it, we've had loads of run-ins with the Fatui. To think we'd be allied with them this time. So shocked by such a simple switching of sides? Father! Well, well, what do you know? Come to the docks to see how my children are doing and meet the Traveler by chance. Please do not pay my accomplishments in Fontaine too much mind. I would have done them regardless. Are you going to... take the Gnosis back to Snezhnaya? That is our duty as Harbingers, yes. Don't be too preoccupied with sides. The goal of the Fatui concerns not a single place or person, but the entire world. With such a grand goal in mind, it is inevitable that we must wear many masks. Switching my masks is something I've always done. Well, that depends on many things. No one truly knows what the future holds. What good is honesty if you can't rely on it forever? As for you, I very much look forward to our next collaboration. Good things cannot be achieved alone, and you've proved yourselves to be great partners. A vision? <sighs> All right. I'll remember to return it. Thank you for keeping it safe for him this entire time. That's a wrap for me. It, huh? You... you're... Greetings, Miss Journalist. Uh, um... Hello! If I'm not mistaken, there are diplomatic channels I'll need to report to to take a photo of you. That is correct. So forgive me, but I will not be able to serve as a subject in your article. However, feel free to write as much as you'd like about our dear magicians and our upcoming rookie talent. I... I will! The sea breeze is quite pleasant. Oh, I shall continue my walk while the weather remains so agreeable. Farewell. Farewell, father. Oh, she has such an intimidating presence. I didn't even dare to take a picture. Thankfully, I've already wrapped up all my pre-scheduled interviews. Thank you all. This will be more than enough for me to write about, I'm sure. Don't be too nervous. Why don't you take a magic pocket before you go? Here, Traveler, Paimon, you take one too. To move things about? That's right. <laughs> Funny. I was giving out magic pockets when we first met too. And what do you know? I'm doing the exact same thing right now. So many things have happened, but the pockets are still the pockets. I guess this must be life. We will all follow our own paths, and serendipity will lead you to your fated friends. All right, then. We'll be handing out pockets in some other districts later, so we'll get going now. Have a good day, you two.
Mr. Nivellet. Hiya didn't think you were going to have free time this hour of the day. Really? Oh, I suppose you must have met Mr. Linney. He took the time to greet me earlier when he passed this way. In any case, you came at a good time. I was just considering reaching out to you to set up a meeting, so I may explain some things that I haven't had the time to before. Aw, Pinehead's glad that you remembered. Thank you for keeping us on your mind, what with you being busy and all. Alright, let's have it then. How was Fontaine actually saved? The whole business is still quite the mystery to us. Hmm. <sighs> It is strange how words can often leave a bitter taste in the mouth when it finally comes time to say them out loud. Wow! So that's what happened? Fossilor destroyed the Divine Throne of the Hydro Archon and restored your power to you, transforming you into a fully fledged elemental dragon sovereign! But Paimon still doesn't quite get what you did to save the Fontanians from dissolving. For me, the authority of the ancient dragons refers to absolute control over the hydro element. Fontanians were incomplete humans born of Egeria's use of the power of the primordial sea, with constitutions similar to that of mimics. But so long as those primordial energies remain within them, I could use the ancient dragon's authority to grant them true blood, after the fashion in which life was first brought into being on this planet. In other words, when I gave my verdict, Fontanians became true humans, and thus would naturally no longer be dissolved by water from the primordial sea. Fossilor must have counted on you to make that decision as well. Your verdict was the key to making the prophecy appear to have come true while saving everyone. Yeah, and in a manner of speaking, Fossilor finally managed to fulfill the original Hydro Archon's wish to turn Oceanids into real people, too! <laughs> it seems from your expressions that you still have more things you wish to ask. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. I have investigated his case along many avenues, and I have learned that he once fell into an unknown chasm when he was young. There, by chance, he awakened the all-devouring narwhal. But whether it be by sentiment or reason, that should not have been enough to consider him the root cause of the disaster. At most, he would have had tangential liability. As for the judgment passed by the Oratrice during the trial, whether it was due to that liability by association, or Fossilor deliberately using him to buy time for us on the assumption that he would be able to hold the creature off, I cannot say. Guess Fossilor had Fontanians in mind the whole time! In the end, it was thanks to her that they finally became real humans! Uh, hang on a second. Paimon suddenly got another question. Back when Fontanians hadn't yet become real humans, were the children they had also transformed Oceanids? Life has always flowed like water. Do you recall how Fontanians would often come to the Fountain of Lucene to pray for children? Yeah! Lynette said the fountain is where all the waters in Fontaine converge! In truth, even those couples did not know that such prayers were no mere custom, but instead a form of ritual. Those Oceanids who were blessed within the spring water would later descend as new humans in the coming months. Uh, Paimon sort of gets it now. Either way, it seems like this ritual won't be of any further use, but it'll probably live on as a local custom. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Ah, oh, Lady Farina. The people are only aware that her death sentence has not been carried out. She abdicated the post of Hydro Archon and left affairs related to that title to me, before leaving the Opera House. I related Fossilor's words to her faithfully and completely. After hearing them, she seemed neither saddened nor comforted. She simply said that she was tired and needed to rest. Having said that, she then packed her things and moved out of the Opera House, not unlike how an ordinary person might. She's still got a place to stay, right? You need not worry. I will make arrangements to ensure that she will not want for food, clothing, board, or travel. In truth, I am somewhat happy for her. The wear and tear on her spirit will, of course, take time to heal. But now that she no longer has to play the role of Fossilor the Hydro Archon, 
she can finally lay down her burdens and lead a normal life. What about you then? What are your plans now that you've regained your full power? After Fosalor passed on, the Oratrice also ceased to function. This matter will directly affect our trials. After much careful consideration, I've decided to take over its role in our courts. From now on, I shall hear cases and pass verdicts by myself. Looks like you're still considering stuff from the perspective of the Udex, huh? As an elemental dragon, there are indeed many things that I must do. But this power and this duty, a manner of speaking, you could say that both were granted to me. As such, before I attend to my other responsibilities, I must first and foremost continue to serve Fontaine as its highest judge. The duty of the Hydro Sovereign and the duty of the Udex shall coexist within my person. Additionally, the Hydro Archon's departure has brought about another problem, which is that the Opera House shall no longer produce Indemnidium. That's true. That power was derived from the people's faith in the Hydro Archon, wasn't it? Wait, but the various mechs and machines in the city are all still okay. Where are they getting their energy from? As I am now, I have full command over New Musia, and it can serve as a complete substitute. Another reason why I cannot quite leave Fontaine immediately. Wow. This ancient dragon's authority stuff is really quite useful, huh? Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. <laughs> oh, that's right! They say you've given it to the knave as a diplomatic gift or something! Leaving aside their intentionality, the two Fatui Harbingers have indeed done much for us during this crisis. Their sole remaining goal in Fontaine, at least at this point, would seem to be the Gnosis. The Oratrice has ceased to function. The Hydro Archon's Divine Throne is now no more, and I do not need the Gnosis's power. As such, it has lost all meaning for Fontaine. If the Fatui have impure designs, then we might as well accede to their request now, and avoid unnecessary conflict. Ugh, what complicated considerations! Paimon thought you were just giving it to them out of gratitude to the Knave and as an apology to Child! Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. You will soon be heading to Natlan, I presume? I'm afraid that I have little talent as a travel guide, so all I can do is tell you what I know about that land. As far as I'm aware, Natlan can be said to be a nation of dragons. A nation of dragons? You mean like you? No, I suspect that I would not find myself welcome there. Unlike ancient dragons such as myself, the dragons of Natlan have undergone long years of development and evolution. Large numbers of them have entered a form of coexistence with humanity. Natlan is also the nation of war. War ravages those lands like an undying flame. There is one other piece of information I got incidentally from my negotiations with the Knave that I believe may be useful to you. The harbinger known as the Captain has thrown his hat into the endless ring of war. The Captain? Sounds like a real tough customer. Seriously, everywhere you look, there's a Fatui Harbinger doing their thing! I suggest that you fully prepare yourself before going to Natlan. In the meantime, Fontaine's doors will always be open to you. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. When we spoke to Linny earlier, he mentioned that your attitude towards giving away the Gnosis had clearly changed. We guessed that there might be some reason for it that only you were aware of. Hmm. No wonder the House of the Hearth is the Fatui's intelligence division. They are certainly sharp. So regarding this specific issue, I was just getting ready to share something with you. Uh, what is it? In truth, I exchanged some further words with that lady named Skirk after sending you two back to the surface. It went something like this. Well, we're going to head topside to see what's going on. You hurry over soon as well, all right, Nervalette? What next? Hmm. The all-devouring narwhal isn't here, so I'm no longer getting any interference. I can finally catch the scent of your power. What it's made of. It is the authority of the planet's primordial dragons. 
but with something very similar to a god's curse mixed in. It's quite a novel blend. I'm sure I've encountered something like this before. What was it again? I do not know what you speak of. Ah, oh, of course. How could I forget? You should have the remains of the Third Descender on your person, yes? Remains? I've never heard of any such thing. Huh. According to your parlance, I believe it may be called a Gnosis. Well, that much is true. After Fosalor's divinity faded, she handed her Gnosis to me. But I fear I have never heard of it described in the manner that you just did. I've been training with my master, the Fowl, ever since I was young and I have never returned to the surface since. So most of the information I possess, I got from him. It is only natural for those who are greater than humanity to possess a different sort of common sense, which is why there are so many problems in our attempts to communicate with humans. Regardless, you should probably get rid of objects of misfortune to prevent any disasters from befalling you. To live in itself is a blessing, but once a person dies, the bonds he once had with this world shall all turn to curses. What do you mean by that? <sighs> no need to fret. These are just my... personal thoughts. And my reason for no longer wishing to return to the surface. This third descender you refer to, who are they? And when did they die? <laughs> Master never mentioned them to me. Perhaps it just wasn't that important for me to know. If you're interested, though, I could ask him. I'll be sure to pass the answer on to you next time. Next time? You believe we will meet again? I do. Wait. I have a disciple of my own, don't I? He can be the messenger, then. That's what she told me. Whether it would prove useful or not, I wanted to pass that information on to you. The remains of... the Third Descender? So that's what the Gnosis actually are. Paima just thought they looked like chess pieces! How could they be a person's remains? All the same, assuming that there was no misunderstanding or special metaphor at play, that is what she meant to say. And she said that it would bring misfortune and that you should check it, which is why you gave it to the Fatui! If she speaks the truth, then I would simply be putting Fontaine at unnecessary risk by keeping it here. I had guessed that you might already be familiar with this concept, but I did not expect you to be one of them. That means that the Gnosis, which are exceedingly element-compatible and can even enhance elemental abilities, do indeed come from the Third Descender. Hmm, I wonder. Does your body also possess similar properties? Like, uh... Like being able to use elemental powers without a vision! That does sort of count as special compatibility, right? No, no, let's not think about this stuff right now. It just feels... creepy. Comparing the Traveler to the dead Third Descender and all. That's what you say, but this topic still feels like bad once Child recovers, let's get some more answers out of him. Or go look for his master and get the answers that way! I too believe it unwise to make too many blind guesses when information is lacking. The same is true of being at court. Alright. Whatever the case, it seems like the crisis here in Fontaine's over for now! Yes. All of Fosalor's efforts were for this moment as well. But... she sacrificed herself in the end as a god. And she suffered through all those years as a human. Was that really what she wanted? I suppose that would be the mystery of a god's will. I suspect not. But once in a while, I too would guess that if wishes were like the clouds in the sky, they will one day return to the earth as life flows like water. And rain is the final answer. The water levels may sometimes tilt one way or another, but the rain falls fairly upon all. And what, ultimately, is the difference between the rains that fall upon all of us?
It seems from your expressions that you still have more things you ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. I suggest that you fully prepare yourself before going to Natlon. <laughs>